This poem is called A Description of the Stone. Though Daphne fly from Phoebus bright, yet shall they both be one. And if you understand this right, you have our hidden stone. For Daphne, she is fair and white, but volatile is she. Phoebus, a fixed god of might, and red of as blood is he. Daphne is a water nymph, and hath of moisture store, which Phoebus doth confine and heat, and dries her very shore. They being dried into one, of crystal flood must drink, till they be brought to a white stone, which washed with virgin's milk, so long until they flow as wax, and no fume you can see, then have you all you need to ask, praise God and thankful be. This is a recipe for the production of uh, the philosopher's stone. And the author, I'm sure, felt that he'd spoken as clearly as he dare speak. And yet, you know, making something of this is no easy task. This is from the Teatrium Chemicum Britannicum and uh, the late phase of, uh, of alchemy. Here's another one. The world is a maze, and what you why? Forsooth of late a great man did die, and as he lay a-dying in his bed, these words in secret to his son he said. My son, quoth he, "'Tis good for thee I die, for thou shalt much the better be thereby. And when thou seest that life hath me bereft, take what thou findest, and where I have it left, thou dost not know, nor what my riches be. All which I will declare, give ear to me. An earth I had all venom to expel, and that I cast into a mighty well. A water ick to cleanse what was amiss, I threw into the earth, and there it is. My silver all into the sea I cast, my gold into the air, and at the last into the fire, for fear it should be found, I threw a stone worth forty thousand pound, which stone was given me by a mighty king, who bade me wear it in a fourfold ring. Quoth he, This stone is by that ring found out, if wisely thou canst turn this ring about. For every hope contrary is to other, yet all agree, and of the stone is mother. So now, my son, I will declare a wonder, that when I die this ring must break asunder. The king said so, but when he said withal, although the ring be broke in pieces small, an easy fire shall soon it close again. Who this can do, he need not work in vain, till this my hidden treasure be found out. When I am dead, my spirit shall walk about. Make him to bring your fire from the grave, and stay with him till you my riches have. These words a worldly man did chance to hear, who daily watched the spirit, but nay the near. And yet it meets with him and every one, yet tells him not where is the hidden stone. Now, this stuff is obscure. It's deliberately obscure. It was obscure to its contemporaries. And the whole effort became one of uh, collecting this kind of material and finding it out. And you have to understand, this was all circulating in manuscript. Very little of this was printed. The Teatrium Chemicum Britannicum uh, was not printed uh, until uh, 1652. So this was a world without vehicular transportation other than the horse and carriage. And uh, these people were paranoid of being discovered and persecuted for wizardry and witchcraft by the church. So each alchemist working in secret with a limited number of texts, with a local control language, created this vast conceptual patchwork of ideas. And... um, Uh, this is in large measure responsible for the obscurity of what is said 
Then another factor which impinges on this and further complicates the matter is that um, the, the name of the game was projection of the contents of the imagination onto physical processes. So uh, taking red cinnabar, which I mentioned last night, and heating it in a furnace until it sweats mercury, uh, for one alchemist, this is the incineration of the red salamander and the collection of our mercurius in the great pelican. They named their chemical apparati after animals and gods. And so the pelican is a standard distillation apparatus, basically a condenser on top of something which is boiled. 